I'm recording. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, everybody. We are going on a road trip. We're going to da We're going to Dante. We're going to Dante's. We're going to see a friend of ours, Dante. He just had a baby. How old is this baby? Like two months? Yeah, two or three months. It's a little I think, baby like, thing. yeah, little, tiny little baby. And so we're making a trip up there. We also are going to pass through my alma mater, BGSU. He he sported the cup that he stole from me. Yeah. He stole this cup from me. It was mine, but. Dante's in Michigan, by the way. We didn't. Yeah. Say. Oh, yeah. We're going to Michigan. We're going to Michigan. That's kind of important information. So we're yeah. going to Michigan, um, kind of like right right over the border. So like Cincinnati, I'll put like a map. It's like Cincinnati, you go like straight up, you pass through BG and Toledo, going into um, where he's located. And this is our first road trip and family trip with our new teen placement, who is here, just not in camera, because we don't share anything um, about them. And we have our caseworker review our videos and, and that sort of thing. Darcy wants to share something. She's made a drawing. Sawyer is playing with his toy. Um, if you travel with little kids, you know you have to have like all the things to keep them occupied, keep them happy. Uh, we're grabbing some hotcakes from McDonald's. We bribed the kids. Yummy! Yeah, we're not above bribery. We're not above bribery, so they are getting hotcakes and we're getting some Starbucks because I kids need to needs, be bribed. <laughs> kids need energy, you know. Give them all the caffeine. Yeah. And also, we're we're gonna be able to hang out at a lake this weekend too. So impromptu, I texted a friend of mine who actually lives in Denver. Who's calling? <laughs> So this friend actually lives in Denver and I haven't seen her for years. Um, definitely pre-pandemic. That's the alphabet. We're gonna hear that a lot. <laughs> this is why we don't vlog that much. This is why this doesn't happen. Oh, but he's so cute. He's adorable. So I ended up texting her because tomorrow's her birthday. I wanted to know what she wanted for her birthday. And she said she was in Michigan and like, super close to where we're going so um she is at her family's uh lake house because they're fancy and they have a, a lake house oh my gosh and we get to go out on the boat the kids are gonna have so so much fun i think our teen foster placement is gonna have a ton of fun too this is just it's just it's perfect it's perfect this is just like the perfect little getaway um we're staying in an airbnb just for one night but we're packing in so so much so a little over two hours into the drive, we make it to Bowling Green and we stop for some lunch. We also take um, a moment to stretch our legs on campus and walk around and check out the new BGSU sign. Um, that definitely is an addition um, from when I was in school. Uh, the kids had a lot of fun. Again, it was just a good opportunity to break up the drive. Was able to meet a few people here, which was pretty cool. And then here's the Airbnb that we reserved. Um, it was perfectly priced and perfectly sized for us for one night. Um, definitely like having a full kitchen, especially with kids. Um, we like the extra space that Airbnbs typically offer. Um, so John and I shared uh, the one bedroom, but then in the living room there were two couches. We had Darcy sleep on one, the other pulled out into a bed. And then Sawyer actually had a little inflatable bed as well. Uh, is that good? Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one of the main reasons, actually the main reason that we came to Michigan is this fine gentleman right here. Oh. Are we allowed to show your baby on here? Of course. Okay, I'm going to put like a little picture of the real reason why, why we came to see his new little fresh baby. So freaking cute. But this face, if you do not know him yet, this is Prison to Profit, Dante. Him and John have been friends. How long have you guys been friends? year and a half year and a half yes. they're in like that whole reseller stuff so nothing to do with fostering no. but you're about to see his face a little bit uh are you allowed to say on a reality tv show what's the name of that reality tv show it's called 60 days in so he can't share anything but i just want to introduce you to dante because if you're into the show or maybe if you want to check it out coming out in august august 19th august 19th only on a and e at Oh. On Thursday. That's a Thursday. That's a Thursday. <laughs> you got to get in those promo the <laughs> yeah, promotion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, we are like super excited to see how they portray you, how your experience went. Like, we have, we're just, we're Team Dante. We are Team Dante. Y'all got to be Team Dante. And if you watch the show, do you guys think I tapped out? Let her know in the comment section below. Did I tap out? Look at this face and let me know. I don't know. And we'll, we'll, maybe we can even put like the promo so you can see it. Like, yeah. So we're, we're excited. And this is honestly the main reason we wanted to come up here. You guys are always coming down to visit. We finally met your girl, met your baby. 
It's been a fun trip. Oh, I appreciate y'all coming down. Thanks for having us. Definitely. Thank you, thank you. We have a creeper. <laughs> He's like, where's mommy? Hey, everybody. So it's day two of our little road trip. Yesterday was a lot of fun. So on our way to visit Dante, Katie, and their new baby, Brendel. Um, Katie also has a daughter, Izzy, and Darcy Sawyer and her were playing like crazy. They had so much fun. But on our way, we stopped at BG, which is where I went to school. I was able to walk around campus a little bit and just check out how everything has changed. I mean, I graduated in 2009. I know that dates. I'm dating myself, but um, graduated in 2009, so like so many things have changed and I was able to meet up with a few people who um, you know I didn't go to school with um, but I've met since then and they're in the area so I was able to have lunch get hugs um, it was really awesome and they got to meet the family we also had stuffed breadsticks at campus poly eyes um, if you're from this area you know what I'm talking about they are so freaking delicious I was so hungry and so excited to eat I didn't even get like a picture so I'll do like a little stock image to show you what it is and we had so much extra food that we went ahead and just had like a late afternoon kind of snack and then had like a lighter dinner and then we just hung out with Dante and Katie and talked and snuggled on the baby and yeah just had like a good time. Our foster teen played with the oculus that they had and that was really fun to watch. There were a couple of moments when like the punches were getting a little close to the kids and I started freaking out. Um, I think an oculus is gonna be on a Christmas list if I had to guess. And because we spent so much on food yesterday um, this morning when we woke up because even though Sawyer didn't go to bed until like 9 30 he was still up at six o'clock. Um, so John got up and he went to the Meyer that's close by and picked up all the ingredients for breakfast and even so that we can make sandwiches. And now we're all packed up. We have our little picnic lunch and we are visiting my college friend at her lake house. And this is my college friend who I haven't seen for years. And honestly, her birthday is today, July 4th. And I just happened to message her to see what she wanted for her birthday. Found out that she's in Michigan. Found out that she's 25 minutes away. And so this is like the perfect birthday present. I'm actually gonna put little bows on Darcy and Sawyer and like push them towards her and give them hugs. And it's gonna be awesome. Pretty much as soon as we got to my friend's lake house, we immediately got into our swimsuits and started setting up on the boat. And this is my best friend, so it's her birthday. Wish her happy birthday in the comments. Had to get her in the shot. And um, yeah, this is the kid's first time out on a boat. So we kind of taxied out um, from the smaller lake into the bigger lake where we uh, put the anchor down and did some swimming. This is Darcy attempting to jump and then faking us out, <laughs> but then she really just didn't even want to get out of the water. She was having so, so much fun. Sawyer got in for a bit, but then kind of got tired of it, so John set out with him, and I stayed in the lake with Darcy. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us on our mini road trip. And we packed in a lot for just a couple of days. Pretty much as soon as we got home, we were able to unpack a little bit. Um, I got the kids baths because we had just been in the lake <laughs> earlier that day. And then he turned around and took our teen placement and Darcy to go see fireworks. I decided to stay home. It was important for me to be home with Sawyer, get him uh, to bed at a decent time. And also I was picking up our previous foster daughter, Miss A, from work. But we had asked our team placement like if they wanted to do something with fireworks, if they wanted to go to this event, and they really, really wanted to go. So we made sure to prioritize that. And this is part of being a foster parent, kind of going out of your way to make sure that something happens for the child that's meaningful for them, even if you would prefer not to attend, not to go, not to participate. And this is something that they may not necessarily teach you in training, um, but from our experience, it's really important as a foster parent to kind of go with what the kids want to do, prioritize what's important to them, what's going to matter to them. So for us, we could have done without fireworks, but it was really important to them. So we made sure that it happened. And I wanted to take just a few minutes to talk about what it's like to plan a trip and go on a trip with a foster placement. So for us, it just starts with family conversations. So John and I will have an idea like this to go on a little road trip. We knew that we were crossing state lines, um, which means that it needs, you know, probably 
get more approval than if we were staying within our state. But any time that the child is not going to stay in the home, at least in our case, in our state, in our county, um, we have to let the caseworker know. So you want to be sure you're having these conversations with your caseworker as early as possible. Once John and I figured out that we could make this road trip work and logistically we could get support from our family, um, somebody needed to pick up Miss A from work and she actually stayed with a family member uh, while we were away because she was still working so she couldn't come with us. But then we open it up to the family and so you know we talked to Darcy, you know Sawyer doesn't understand, but we talked to Darcy about the trip, we get her excited about it um, and then we talk to our placement and we make sure that they're going to be comfortable with the arrangements that are being made. For us it's important that they're a part of the conversation, that they're part of the decision making process. Uh, we want to make sure that they always feel safe and supported and so if you're taking them out of this home that already is like new and kind of strange and they're getting used to, then you want to pick them up and move them into a different environment. Well, depending on the kid, um, that might spark something that might trigger them in some way. So you want to have those conversations depending on the placement's age and case and all of that. Um, you might want to engage with their therapist to see if there are going to be any triggers how, how you can help support the child in coping with those. A lot of times you'll get approval from the parents. So even if the child is in the custody of the county, the parents still have residual rights. And so the caseworker might have the final say, but they're gonna wanna consult with the parents and have the parents help in that decision. And we have had experience with previous placements where we were asking permission to take a child on the trip. The parents said no, the caseworker and the county said yes, and then we were in a position where um, you know, we were leaving on a trip and we were going on this trip and the parents were not in agreement. And you know, it can get a little bit messy, so that's why it's, it's really important to try to get everyone on the same page. And again, this is gonna depend on the case and the family for that child. So for us, um, this little one night trip didn't pose too many problems. It was a quick little thing. We weren't going that far. So we were able to kind of get approval fairly quickly, but it does help to kind of iron everything out ahead of time and just share that information with the caseworker. Let them know when you're planning on leaving, where you're planning on staying, any other you know considerations, uh, definitely share with them. And there could be different rules in your county or your state um, that make it you know a requirement that the child needs their own space you know so if you're traveling and you're doing an Airbnb you know you'll have to make sure that they have a separate room you might also consider that if you're doing a hotel you'll need two hotel rooms um, or one that has like a, a separate space because some hotels like have the bedroom and then they have like a living room again just check with your caseworker to see what is going to be required if you're traveling with a placement and if you have any tips or tricks when it comes to traveling with your foster placement, um, whether it's the conversations up front, considerations that you make, the conversations that you have with the caseworker to get approval, um, and then in the moment, like when you're traveling. If you have any of those things to share, definitely put them in the comments. Um, this is definitely an opportunity to share our experience, share our knowledge, and others can learn from it. And similar to making sure that we attended fireworks because it was going to be important to our team placement, we also knew that being out on the lake was another kind of a big deal because it was very familiar to them. Um, so you want to make sure that you're finding opportunities to get to know um, the kids in your care, talk with them, learn about their interests, learn about their past, whatever they're comfortable with sharing, and try to find ways to incorporate that. So if you're going on a vacation, it's not just your family vacation anymore. You've added to your family, even temporarily. So consider what their interests are and try to incorporate some of those things into the trip and it's really going to go a long way. They're going to really feel a part of the family. They're going to be a part of the experience. They're not going to feel like an outsider. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, coming along with us for our little trip. I hope um, some of this information helps if you are planning on traveling with your placements um, either now or in the future. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.